I'm looking at 7.6 and 7.9. Geometry is kind of similar, but there's not close enough to do a reuse repurpose. So they'll go through uh, single. And when you do the uh, the special bearing, I'm going to have that be a uh, try it yourself. So we'll review the uh, critical dimensions, things that you need to watch out for when we uh, when we get to that one. So looking at the uh, the truck wheel, it's in metric. Uh, it has kind of an I-beam structure, which uh, makes it um, uh, going to be symmetrical. Um, three holes, so we're not really concerned where the um, the hole intersects. But when we're looking at the profile, this um, kind of right side profile is um, the one that we're going to be interested in drawing. And it, again, it'll be in the top plane. We'll probably put the um, the origin at the center of the wheel so that we can use that reference to um, uh, go for uh, for symmetry. Things to watch out for wheels and pulleys is sometimes they have a crown. And um, when uh, we look at the 710 idler pulley, it has this kind of arc along the uh, the outside of the of the pulley. And sometimes that'll just be defined as the, cr the crown of the pulley. So, so I'm not seeing that here. So the I-beam is um, you know, pretty straightforward. And then the, um, the center uh, cord isn't uh, particularly um, detailed. I do want to include the hole so there'll be a gap. And now let's go ahead and get started. So we'll go to uh, File and New and Part Metric. All right. So, as you're as you're looking at these parts, I'm going to say trust your your gut. If it looks like a, um, a boss base uh, piece, then build it up as boss extrusions. If it uh, looks like a revolve, then um, you know go ahead and uh, make it as a revolve. The um, other kind of clue is if it looks like on the manufacturing process, you'd make it on a mill then um, it's probably going to be a prismatic uh, shape um, where um, uh, we can stay with the uh, the boss um, extrusions. The um, part that would be made on the lathe or a turning center, then that's probably going to be a revolve. All right, so top plane, I'm going to open up my sketch. We're going to go right for the center line, and it's going to be a vertical center line, infinite length. And then come out to the origin. Make sure that you have the little uh, yellow uh, dot for coincidence. And we're vertical and coincident. And we'll go ahead and accept. All right. So on this one, I'm going to go ahead and get out of that. On this one, I want to utilize the mirror. So I'm going to put in another center line. But as soon as I put in this next center line, I'm going to have to make a selection when it comes to the revolve. So one center line, it's not even really going to ask me for the axis of revolution. I can just verify it in the property manager when we're creating the feature. As soon as you add second, third, fourth center line, uh, that that changes. All right, so I'm going to fly this back in and show you what I'm going to draw. Is are my infinite length is going along the 44 there? And if my origin is at the center somewhere around the tip of the four, then I'm coming out to this distance. And, and then I'm going to draw one half. It doesn't really matter which half. I'm going to draw one half of the wheel and then mirror it over. Okay, so if I start, and I got a line in there somewhere. If I start on the origin, then this is going to completely close off and there's not going to be a through hole. Since I want to include the through hole, then we're going to come out and over and start to generate the web. The web has a little bit of an angle. So it's going from, let's see, from 16. Well, we're going to have to see how that one plays out. So I'm going to make sure that it doesn't pick up that inference. So we're off at a little bit of an angle, come over, up and out, 
and the outside is going to be a little bit smaller so and then come back to the to the center okay and go into select and I could go ahead and mirror it uh, one of the things I like to do is to try and get this much fully defined and then when I mirror I'm pretty well assured that it's going to be a fully defined sketch I don't have to um, mess with it much more uh, let's see my through dimension is 23.72 to 23.8 so that gives me a maximum or yeah, maximum material condition of the 23.72 the interesting part is that we're going to run into because that 16 millimeters kind of to that intersection out here is off of the the bore dimension and granularly 0 0.08 of a millimeter is not a lot but when you dimension that way you're allowing that point to shift so it's well within the tolerant zone but when I identify it and either uh, analyze it as a concern or go ahead and uh, dismiss it as it's not that big of a deal Ah, and then the 23.72. Uh, I placed it on the wrong side of the center line, so I actually have a radial dimension. So when I highlight this, I'm going to switch it back over to diametral. So let's go through that again. Highlight the dimension. We're looking at the value, and we've done some things with the values and dimension text um, in the drawing and stuff, uh, not whatnot. So uh, under the leaders, it'll come down. Right now it's in radial. I'm going to switch it over to radius. And then I'm going to go back and change it to the 23.72 for a diameter. All right, so I'm still looking. The outside is 50. Okay, so make sure to get on that side of the center line. So I have my radial distance, or my, I'm avoiding my radial distance going for the diametral. And then we're going to go from, uh, let's see, it's still in, still in that uh, diametral radial, so I have to hit escape. And then I can pick the point, and then that will become 16. All right, so that gives me the angle. My overall distance, and so in this case it's not necessarily the diameter, but we are getting a whole dimension with our um, half apart. So 44 and 34. Okay, and that's starting to come together. Let's go ahead and escape more time. It said that um, there's no indication that there's a crown, so I can go back to the center line. All right, so in between is my radial. Switching over, once I cross over the center line, then I have a diameter of 133. The web, see if we can get it down. Oh, it's going to go to 121 to the inside. All right, so that's looking pretty good. And then, let's see, I'm still in. The diameter, notice the, the D in the center line, so I'm going to hit escape and that goes away. And then we'll cross over, go to 10. And now the D in the center line is back on the icon. But at that point I have gotten it pretty well defined and we're ready to mirror. Alright, so <clears throat> when I'm selecting from left to right, I'm picking everything in the window. All right, so that is excluding the, the center line. When I pick right to left, then everything crossing the window, including the dimensions, but the dimensions really aren't going to participate in the mirror, so I'm not worried about those. Uh, the difference is that if I go from left to right and go into mirror, then I'm going to be asked to pick the center line, and then it will show me the preview. 
cancel out of that, come back over and go right to left. Because the center line is included in the selection set when I tell it to mirror, I'm just going to get a result. Right, so that's kind of handy, just recognize the difference between the two. And then of course if you go into mirror and haven't picked anything, blue box is your selection, you pick it and then you pick your axis and and it goes ahead and performs the mirror. Alright, so we have our geometry in. Uh, pretty comfortable that I got all the dimensions. Um, you know, the 17 for the center, not, not really important. So we're ready to go ahead and revolve the boss base. Alright, so axis of revolution is not selected because we have one, two center lines. If I were to try to revolve around the center line, it would be self-intersecting geometry, not a valid solution. So we go to the infinite length, which was our original intention, and it shows me a preview and gives me uh, a good result. All right, and then one of the things, if we were to stop it at 270, Notice that I have something that now looks very similar, maybe not perfect, but very similar to that profile. That that would was what I was looking for or trying to uh, to achieve. So we'll go back to 360. You don't need a partial there, and go ahead and accept. All right. So as a general rule, flats are going to be last. Oh, I didn't. Um, I didn't catch my limit dimension. So let's see it double click. There's the 2372. So this would be one of those cases where it may be better to go back into the sketch. That's uh, modifying. All right, so can't really do anything with modify. We go over to the property manager. Now I'm gonna set it to a limit dimension and the tolerance is 0 0.08. So um, if we do the conversion, I think that works out to about two, two and a half thousandths. Control seven, and then control one, just to, to view. We have three holes that are on an 86 um, millimeter um, base circle. And I'm looking for the oh, looking for the call out three times, 22 diameter equally spaced. All right, so I'm gonna open up the sketch. This time, I'm pretty sure that those are uh, going to be the um, just through holes, lightning holes. We may end up putting more in. So we'll go dimension, circle, dimension, 22. I'm going to double check that it made it to, uh, to vertical. Nope, I did not get the inference. All right, so even there, when I see that I get the inference line and the white box with the vertical in it, it still hasn't been applied. So I'm going to have to hold down the control button. Because I was dragging with the center point, it's still selected going to control select the origin, make it vertical. And then if we want to do the base circle. And the last hole wizard that we did, I was able to leave the base circle as an object. And this time it will have to be for construction, otherwise we'll be picking contours and regions to, uh, to define what, um, what holes we'll be going through rather than you know, pretty much blowing out the whole center. So have a base circle of 86 millimeters. <clears throat> and let's go ahead with the circular pattern. And we'll pick the, I think that was the origin. Uh, let's go ahead and dimension the angular spacing this time and see what we get. So 120 degrees. And entity to pattern is the circle. And it shows us the preview. 
All right, if I left it equal spacing, then it would do the math, and it would just be three items into the 360. All right, so when I drag away, there is that uh, pesky center point. So in this case, we're not really going to do a whole call out that I'm thinking of, but let's go ahead and just illustrate that if I drag that back to the origin or to wherever that center point happens to be, it causes my sketch to go fully defined. Um, that point still kind of bugs me, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it. I don't know that the whole callout's going to pick anything up, but if I want to use it, and I want it to be available, I don't want it to add that additional point in. Okay, so dragging the center point till it infers coincident with the circle. Drag the center point till it infers coincident with the base circle, and then we're fully defined. All right, so let's take a look real quick if I left that as an object geometry. And we go to cut through. We're going to do an extruded cut. It's looking at the region, so I would have a potential region, a potential region, a potential region, or multiple regions, or I'd have to go through and select each of the three circles. However, if I go recognize it and go to construction geometry, now we have three discrete circles. And when I tell it to extrude cut, we're going to just allow it to go through all on the end condition and finish. All right, so six times radius of three. So inside, outside, um, let's see, six times radius of two, so the holes are different. So that makes it to where, if they were all three millimeters or all two, two millimeters, then I could pick the face. But seeing how we're going to go, one, two, three. And then that one is looking at the, the count here, so it's showing. And then so maybe the outside is the other the other two since it's not not pointing at it. Okay, so one, one, two, and three are going to be a fillet of uh, three millimeters. <clears throat> oh, I guess we can go ahead and rotate over and make sure to get the back side into the, into the mix. Okay, and then one... So the count is a little weird there, let's put it that way. And add one to the mix, and then make sure that we're at two millimeters. All right, so that looks pretty good. We got a little bit of blending issue there, but that's not a surprise. And I think that's uh, that's looking pretty good. So we will save it. Point six. This is the truck wheel. And some initials. And save.